<laughs> Welcome to episode 29 of PD's Awesome Guest Panel. Man, I can't believe I reached 29 episodes. I can't believe this. My guest at this time is a voice acting veteran. No, 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 no. A voice acting legend. Uh, you may know this gentleman from many projects. He was uh, Captain N in the Captain N Game Master, Kevin Clean. He was Ed in Ed and Eddie, my favorite role that this gentleman has done. He's done other projects too. He was in Dino Babies. He was in, he made appearance in Courage the Cowardly Dog. He was also in episodes like shows like Meryl's Place and X-Files. My guest at this time is Mr. Matt Ed Hill. Matt, Ooh. how are you today, my friend? Uh, well, hey, man. Aloha, brother. Good to be <laughs> with you. And uh, thanks for that amazing shout out. And uh, as my buddy, I would say uh, you are all very, very sparkly people. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. And as yeah. Ed would say, though, gravy and butter toast. Right. That's right. <laughs> uh, the first question I have for you, Matt, is, um, how, and this is going to be a cliche question, but how did you get started into acting, voice acting? Oh, so cliche. It's never been asked before, but you know, such a great question though. Um, you know, it's wild, dude. It was this, this fire that was burning inside me that, you know, a dream that said, you must act, you must be up on stage. You must, you know, like we called it monkey hour around our cul-de-sac. Cause actually I did grow up in a cul-de-sac that I'm sure lots of, you know, you guys did as well. We've all kind of, you know, had our growing up memories. And, um, for me, that was my like kind of start, you know, to like, sit under the proverbial spotlight um you know it just happened to be the street light um and that we you know we do these crazy monkey hour things and um so for me it was doing crazy fun voices and you know running loops around everyone else while everyone else rode their bikes and um at 13 i decided my life was half over so i said you know what i'm gonna do this acting dream and um you know i i skipped school that day uh sorry to everybody who may have skipped school before and you know, told their parents they were too sick to go to school, but uh, hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, so I did and uh, got an agent at 13 um, who, you know, like she said, she's like, either I'm delusional or, you know, I'm going to take a chance on you, kid. And because uh, she, you know, she felt like I had something that I had to offer. And, uh, um, you know, um, I, I'm so thankful that she took that chance on me because, uh, you know, um, she also made me sign up for an acting class right away so that I didn't let her down taking a chance on me. Uh, and it was the best, you know, it was the best 500 bucks I've ever spent in my life. And, uh, you know, like for real, just started this 30 year career that like in some respects seems like it's gone, you know, at the, at the, you know, what was that called? Snap of the fingers, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, but along the way, you know, getting the privilege to lend my voice to some of these characters that, you know, um, like you said, it's like, you know, people have grown up on and, you know, and now their kids, kids are growing up on them and, all sorts of people, right? So, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I more so find myself these days going like, mahalo, thank you so much for this, you know, for this life and, you know, getting to talk about it in the way that I get to talk about it. So thanks, man. At any time. And before we get to the Ed and Ed questions, because I was a huge fan of Ed and Ed growing up because uh, I remember when it debuted in uh, January 4th, 1999, I was a fan, I was an immediate fan after watching the first episode, the Ed Touchables. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh, yes. But my first question I, I have to ask you before we get to Ed and Eddie is like uh, memories of working on Captain N Game Master. Oh, yeah. Well, Captain N, like for me, being a Canadian kid, so knowing that this was like hailing from, to me, this was like the mecca of all things, you know, like Hollywood, entertainment capital of the world. And, you know, I was getting to do the voice of Captain N. So like for the first time in my life, I'd actually hear my voice on a character on Saturday morning cartoons, which, you know, for me, that was just like, oh my God. I never, you know, I never in my wildest dreams thought that might come around. You know, um, I guess when I was 21, uh, that was that first foray into, uh, you know, bona fide sort of cartoons that, you know, everyone could say, you know, hey, did you watch Captain Nintendo this weekend? You know, so, uh, and it, it was amazing. It was like such a, a, a awesome way to, you know, cut my teeth and, you know, scrape my knees as it were, and, you know, uh, mess up so many times. Um, and, uh, you know, and at the, at the same time, learn so much about this craft of voice acting, you know? Awesome. And um, I, I love the, the video game references on the show. Like I, I grew up like with many video games. My dad would play video games and I would like, watch, like, you know, he played punch out and one of the characters in Captain N was a punch out character, King Hippo. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. 
Gary Talk. Oh, I love that character. This is so do- good. <laughs> it's yes. <laughs> But uh, another like another show that you worked on, you played Raphael in Ninja Turtles: Next Mutation. Uh, memories of doing that show? Oh yo 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 yeah! I mean, uh, for me, it was getting to revisit playing Raphael because I'd I'd first gotten to play him uh, inside the turtle suit for Turtles number three, uh, the movie, and uh, so it was like it, for me, it was a really neat revisit of this character on this iconic series that you know. And franchise that um you know little did i have even any like I, I had no idea how popular the turtles were you know until we were filming um you know so then i'd always be you know like hundreds and hundreds of kids and their parents you know wanting to get a picture of us between takes and and uh, you know so then when um the fox set are the folks at fox kids you know said hey would i like to reprise you know Raphael?" uh i was like yo 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 absolutely you know so you know, it was a neat way to be able to tie the character up for myself to be able to say, okay, like what an honor to be able to play this guy twice, you know, in, in, you know, in some respects, two completely different genres, right? Um, you know, one like with my blood, sweat, tears and my, you know, getting concussions and, you know, all sorts of things, being inside this, you know, 80 pound turtle suit and then getting to lend my vocal cords to be able to bring, you know, this, this guy to life, you know, and live the you know the code of the turtle it's uh it, it was a uh, is an immense honor then it was an immense honor now i agree and what other person could say that you know they worked uh, uh, they were part of the ninja turtles it's a yeah. it's parody oh. oh absolutely yeah i mean it's you know like i say I, I i i was just so grateful that you know at 13 i chose okay this is my path i'm going to be an actor and i just i said it and i went and i got really lucky um with some really cool stuff um, I also worked my butt off, you know, to to continue to work on, you know, getting more stuff. And, and uh, so it's been this constant sort of, you know, uh, relationship of going, OK, enjoy what you have and also, you know, uh, be grateful for what you do. But also at the same time, always keep sort of like, you know, breaking new ground for yourself so that it, you know, it stays fresh for yourself, but also more so fresh for you know the producers and casting people and and all those folks that are hiring you for new shows right um you know but uh oh yeah i mean i'm un- like unreal i can't believe 33 years has gone by it's just like what where did the time go <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, uh, <laughs> But you know, you mentioned Fox Kids show. Let me just say, actually, sorry, I made a mistake. I've actually been a fan longer than Ed and Eddie. Like as, as another show, I was a huge fan of that you were part of, and it was also a Fox Kids show in '97. Uh, as a seven-year-old kid watching uh, Dino Babies. Wow, Dino, Dino Babies. Babies! I remember that show. Ah, oh, that was a great show, man, dude. You like thanks for letting me be part of your childhood. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, for the childhood memories <laughs> totally oh yeah dude it was uh you know but like you say it's like sometimes i guess you know that's what they say kind of like they always say like okay what's your legacy what's your what's your stamp what's your footprint that you're gonna leave on the world and for me i knew early on i really wanted it to be in you know this this crazy wild world called acting not knowing at the time that it was going to include voice acting and and actually in in many ways voice acting taking over for quite a long time in sort of being more of what I was doing day to day. Um, but then, you know, this, this kind of, I don't know, like a, a balance of, you know, getting to, to work with just some incredibly talented people. Um, you know, some of the coolest humans alive, um, some of the most talented people on the planet. Um, and then, you know, um, have the gift of, of now, um, at year 25. Um, so just that as Ed, Ed Nettie was, was wrapping up, uh, to be going on a, a year long run around North America. Um, you know, the gifts in that were like, oh my God, uh, like I could talk another hour just on the gifts of, you know, getting to meet people in real time that said, you know, dude, like Raphael, like, you know, he helped me get through a tough childhood or, you know, kids losing their mind, you know, knowing I was at, you know, Ed, right. So it allowed me to share this message that we were sharing with kids you know, to, to believe in yourself and to make healthy choices for yourself and for the planet, right? It was so beautiful to be able to go, hey, yo, 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 who wants to save the planet with Raph? You know, and then Ed would jump in and be like, yeah, who wants to save the planet with Ed as well? And, you know, and so I, I had this sort of like double two punch of what I called almost like hero awesomeness, you know, where kids and their teachers and their parents would just be going like, what? 
yes, we'll do anything, right? So it was such a beautiful confirmation, sort of circle back moment of choosing at 13 to do this career in, you know, in, in performing, right? Um, you know, and, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, God, you know, I mean, I hope it's not over, but, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, um, you know, I, I, I definitely, I had, you know, I've had these moments where it's just like, wow, in some respects, how can it get any better than this sometimes? Right. You know, and then something else comes around and you go, Oh, I get it. Thank you. <laughs> right. So, you know, I, I agree. And, you know, like, and go on to the, um, uh, before we get to Ed and Eddie, I do want to ask like, or didn't you also appear in Courage the Cowardly Dog? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. That was some – God, that was a while ago. You got a good – do you have an IMDb page out there? No, oh, I, I saw the IMDb uh, – I did research, and I know that you were on that, and you were credited as two teddy bears. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't recall, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't I, – yeah, God. Sorry. No, no worries. No worries. I wonder if that was – Courage the Cowardly Dog. I wonder if that, that might be a typo. I'm not sure. Sometimes oh. I, be, I, 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 what's it called? Not IBM. I am I am BBD or BBD or I, something. I am yeah. The Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. Well, because at one point I think they, they had me as being like one of the regulars in um, Melrose Place, which was like a big show in the '90s, and and I'm like, I didn't do Melrose Place, but okay, I'm glad somebody thought I did. Did you, you know. X-Files? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, did I? Yeah, I'd be like, what? I didn't do X Files. Yes, I did. <laughs> that uh, was fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I have to ask you too. Like, you know, uh, memories of uh, working with uh, David Duchovny and Julian Anderson. Yeah, well, oh, two of the coolest humans on the planet. Um, you know, doing a show that, like, I think same thing. Nobody knew at the beginning where that thing was going to go, right? Like, they just, you know, obviously, like, that, like all of us. Everybody was just super grateful to be working as actors, you know, living in our, well, in this case, me living in Vancouver, um, you know, but Chris Carter and the writers on that thing were so like, talk about like writing crazy, amazing stuff that, you know, it allowed this beautiful combination of, you know, Jillian and David, right. To build this really quirky, cool, you know, co-partnership together. Right. Um, these two characters. You know, and then as it went along, you know, um, yeah, I mean, even the just like the one episode I was in, it was so neat to just be like, ah, yeah, I'm here, you know, and literally I was like in a bathtub dying, you know, from like being a Marine that, uh, you know, died in a, in a, in a tub of, of, uh, you know, water. So, you know, but I don't want to give away the story, but whatever. And, um, uh, wasn't, um, the cast of Dino ba uh, Babies, weren't, wasn't a uh, Kathleen Barr and Sam Vincent on that show too? Yep, absolutely. Two of my favorite people. <laughs> yes, you know, Sammy's, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, me and Sammy work on tons of stuff together. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's a fine, fine human being, as is Kathleen Barr. It, Everybody's it, great. You know who I, uh, I actually got in contact with uh, recently? He, he retired from acting, though, and that was another Ed and Eddie co uh, uh, co uh, co star of yours, and that was Tony Sampson. Oh, awesome. So, sorry, you connected with him? I connected with him. He said he does. I was going to ask him to do an interview, but he said he doesn't do interviews uh, because he doesn't do acting anymore. Yeah, he doesn't do acting. Yeah, I know. Mr. Tony, you know, at the end of this of, of our of our run on the Eds, you know, I think he, you know, sometimes like true to life, right? Sometimes he just was like, you know what? I've, I've been a child actor for a long time. I want to see what else is out there for me. So he, you know, he moved north, um, literally, and uh is having a beautiful life, you know? So, um, he, he, we connect every once in a while, like, you know, my birthday or something, I'll get a text or whatever and vice versa, or, you know, some random little voice message, you know, out of the blue. He's, a very, he's a very nice man. Like I, I said, I was interviewing you like, and this was like last Friday. And he yeah. says, oh, um, he, he said, oh, Matt is a very beautiful man. Oh, well, there you go, man. See, I pay a lot of money for people to say that, you know, yeah. but, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, like they say, right, likes attract like, and um, Tony is uh, one of the coolest, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go over to the Ed and Eddie questions. Now, Ed and Eddie debuted, and it was the – Ed and Eddie, for, for fun facts, though, is one of the longest, if not the longest, uh, show on Cartoon Network history, lasting from uh, literally a decade, from 1999 to 2009. Um, and you, you, Tony, Sam – uh Jan janice uh kathleen uh, everybody that works on the show just dominated cartoon network for 10 years yeah uh, well, yeah 
what was it like uh, working on, on the show? Because oh. I absolutely, it was my favorite role you did. Like, I loved your roles and everything, but this was my yeah. number one favorite. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, for me, playing Ed, I, I literally, I, I could have played Ed for the rest of my life. Because, you know, getting to just, like, go and, like, talk like, well, actually, not even talk like him, but just be like him, um, you know, to this day. I, I often find like, cause I run a lot. And uh, so, you know, I'm talking, you know, to Ed a lot, <laughs> you know, like kick my feet, kick my feet. Oh, pick yourself up, mister. Okay. Go get a candy bar. Okay. Yep. Oh, watch out for that bus, you know? Uh, and so it's, yeah, I mean, bad. same thing. Nobody knew, you know, what this thing was going to do. Right. It just had this like magic elements to it. Um, that I, you know, I had to first and foremost, obviously the creator of it, Danny Antonucci, who's just, just a genius, you know, he had this whole show like in his brain and he squeezed it out of us and beat it out of us with, like, you know, <laughs> with like saying like just the right thing at the right time to get us to dig a little deeper and find more of the character. And, you know, um, so it was a constant love between like, oh my God, I love this show. And oh my God, I'm going to get fired any second. Right. Cause you know, um, it had that edge about it that, uh, you know, if we didn't do the take the way he heard it in his head, it wouldn't get like they wouldn't let it go forward. Right. So <clears throat> so we'd often have like records of, you know, each character. Um, I think for a while, I think Ed held the record. I think I had like 25 takes on one laugh because I just wasn't getting it, you know. And uh, so he, he often went back to what they call the tagline, which actually scored me the role of Ed which once again was after like callback number 10 and out of desperation, I had no idea. Cause I could see Danny going, Oh, they're not getting it. Like I know what I want to hear. And, and so I don't, cause as an actor, you don't do this. You don't blow in the mic and you don't tap the mic. Right. So I did both. I went, I went, dum, 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 you know, and I see the engineer going, what are you doing? Right. I'm like, Oh, and I just like, I had no idea. I went, how do you get water from this thing here? And Danny goes, oh, my God, did you get that recorded? The guy's like, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, I'm fired before I'm even hired. Danny's like, play him that. So then he played me the tape. Oh, uh, how do you get water from this thing here? And then literally Danny's like, every time you don't do Ed, I'm going to play that because that's Ed. Like, you you got to be vacant. You got to be coming in sideways from below, from above. You got to be dyslexic. You got to be completely, you know, Ed. Right. So um, thank God for that mistake. And, uh, you know, it, it kept me a job that, you know, um, with with much humility and gratitude. I'm so grateful I got hired. And that that day I just, you know, tap the mic. So listeners, don't tap the mic or blow in the mic. You'll find another mistake to do and it'll get you a good gig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about um i was gonna ask you too with danny a antonucci like uh memories of uh working with him and he directed you right like uh when in the voice acting booth like mm -hmm. booth. well we called it the um we always tried to figure out who was in which fishbowl because he and our other director um terry classen they were the official like he was danny was obviously the grand poobah and Terry would like try and like find different ways to get us to do the take the way that Danny heard it. So that's kind of the order of things. So, you know, Terry would be like, well, okay, try it this way or oh, I'll try it that way. And then, you know, sometimes Danny just like, you know, pound his head on the, on the table going like, they're not getting it. <laughs> so, you know, once again, we'd find it somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, oh my God. Yeah. It's the only show that like literally, I felt like a few times like I'd had a brain aneurysm at the end of our, of our four hour record because we had like screamed so loud and so long, done so many takes, but yet that was the show, right? And and little did we know that it was getting more popular all around the world. Um, because like even back then I wasn't like a I I didn't I didn't consume like sort of um internet information, so um I didn't actually have a clue how popular we really were, um, you know, except they'd say, yeah, we're number one in wherever, or we're number one here, or hey, we're, you know, we're the year's number one show again kind of thing. So I always felt like, oh, perfect, okay, whew, whew, we're doing a good job, okay. I still get another job, you know, next year when we come back for season whatever. Um, but it was truly, it wasn't until I went out on a, on a run tour around North America um, that I actually experienced how big Ed, Ed, and Eddie and the Ninja Turtles, kind of those two equally, were with 
kids and their parents and their teachers because for our tour was called Run for One Planet. So we ran a marathon a day around North America. And when we hit America, dude, just using Ed in our presentation literally elevated us to like, you know, rock star status in the, in the, you know, these 2000 seat schools. And, you know, um, it, it was pretty big confirmation of, Oh yes. Thank you. Ed. thank you for helping me light up the world. And, you know, and, and then bring a little Raphael in there too, to, you know, share our message. Um, you know, cause like every single, we ended up talking to 50,000 kids, um, doing 50. Well, we did. Yeah. 50. We, sorry. we, the 50,000 kids in 240 school presentations. So I got real time feedback from, you know, like I say, single kids going like, Oh my God, Ed changed my life. Or, you know, a teacher in Houston, I remember, you know, came up to us afterwards. Um, and he said, dude, um, for real watching the Ninja Turtles when I was growing up, he said he grew up in a rough neighborhood. Uh, his, you know, his, he said it's basically, he said he had a tough childhood, right? Didn't go a little further than that, but he, watching the Ninja Turtles specifically for him and Raphael saying, you know, they live by the, the, you know, the code of the turtle and the brotherhood. And that even if you feel like sometimes you're, you know, you may be an outcast, you're really not right. We're all in this together kind of thing. And so here was this like seven foot five, you know, tall teacher telling me that, you know, Raphael and playing Ed had helped him get his life direction, um, which ended up being a teacher. Um, and then, you know, now like being presiding over these 2000 kids, right? So, you know, so all these amazing moments that I kept circling back to, oh my God, I'm so glad I answered that call for myself when I said, you know what, I want to be an actor, right? Like I say, I told my parents I was too sick to go to school, hop the bus to my, you know, to my dream. And, uh, you know, 30 plus years later, it's like, wow, where did the time go? <laughs> you know? I, I do gotta you'll be proud of me on this one though like uh when i was younger though my parents yeah. would take the, the blockbuster uh -huh. and still a fan to this day <laughs> the, wow look at that blockbuster <laughs> and you'll be proud of me on this one that i i would rent uh you know i remember one time i, I rented captain uh and they had a vhs of captain n game master wow. and then i rented the uh uh, I, I believe it was one Ed and Eddie tape. They had an Ed and Eddie tape here, and I rented it from uh, Blockbuster. <laughs> well, thank you very much, man. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Uh, uh, it's, uh, no, no, but that, oh. that's what I think is so neat, though, because now you're doing a podcast because you're love, you love talking to people that you've been also been inspired by, right? Because you grew up watching all this stuff, right? So get on you for starting the podcast, brother. Thank you. And uh, I, I do want to, and for future episodes, uh, I'm going to have a future episode where I'm going to have Janice Jod on here. And she played your little sister, Sarah, on Ed and Eddie. Yeah. Uh, memories of being in the recording booth with her while doing dialogue with her, uh, with you as Ed and her as Sarah. Yeah. Oh, after, oh, God. Well, you know, I mean, she's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that in a great way. She's just so crazy talented. And, you know, like to just, like, same thing, to like be able to just go off. You know, that like the way Sarah did, right? And Ed would go from like being so safe and protected and then, oh, I'm sorry, baby sister, I'm so sorry, right? You know, so it was just this. So, it, and you know, Janice is just this small little person, but she's a freaking dynamo. She's, you know, um, I don't even know how tall she's, she's shorter than me, but so she's, I don't know, maybe five, she's maybe five, three, maybe five, two. Um, but she's a powerhouse and, you know, she would let those lungs fly and, you know, we'd be just like, whoa. <laughs> so <laughs> I still can't believe that she voices and I told her this too one time I said I can't believe you're not only the voice of Sarah but you also voice Lee Kanker because the two characters don't sound anything alike oh I know that's and that's the brilliance of you know um uh, I mean yeah it's uh what yeah it's she's brilliant she's totally yeah yeah absolutely you know and also to the creative team that I think also really allowed us to kind of bend the rules a little bit and, and like just expand our territories, even though we were never allowed to say we couldn't expand, like we could never ad lib. We could never sort of add a breath where we felt there should be a breath. So that was super, super specific, but within the parameters of, you know, it's kind of like playing hockey, 
right? But not like, you know, playing outside of the stick rules or whatever. And, you know, but in, in our terms with the Eds, we also had like a dome above us. So we couldn't even jump out at the top, right? Or we'd hit our head, you know? So it was a very contained environment. <laughs> Uh, did you have favorite uh, a favorite Ed and Eddie episode, whether it's an Ed Central episode or it was just your favorite episode in general? My probably for me, because uh, it's it happens to be my favorite time of the year. I love the Christmas movie. Uh, it was uh, you know like that that scene where where Ed just comes flying in through the side of the house, right? Like and then you know and then like you know so you know what, what was it something ready for waiting for Santa, right? And then he puts up you know gravy cakes and milk and. You know, and, and, and then just drags everything all around the whole, like, you know, neighborhood. I'm just like, oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, you know what was one of my favorite, though? Oh, my, and, you're, and you are a prime, a prime character, uh, a prominent uh, in this episode, and that is Ed and Eddie's Halloween Boo Ha Ha special, oh, where oh. Ed was uh, Lothar. I think it was uh, Lothar? Yeah, yeah. And, I just remember you just nailed it. That episode was just you and you nailed it. Oh, thanks, buddy. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because that that's probably I mean, I, I really I, I sorry, say that again. I appreciate that you like that one so much. Um, I loathed recording that one because I I so f felt like I was not nailing it. Right. So it was, uh, uh, you know, but um, it's nice to know that, uh, you know, um, that you guys thought I did a pretty good job, man. So, you know, thank I, you, buddy. Well, any, anything you do, Matt, it's just totally, uh, you just nailed it. Like, I remember there was one lot, there's, Ed, 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 Ed has so many great quirks. Some of my favorite lines that you did as Ed, uh, one is definitely, don't even think about it, think about yeah. it. <laughs> totally. Oh, my God. I know it's, it's neat because I get to do, um, have you heard this thing called Cameo? Yes. Yeah, they, they invited me to join. And so it's been such a like massive pleasure and gift to, you know, do stuff like that. Because most of them are, I mean, probably 80% of them are for Ed. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll sing happy birthday to people or I'll just spit out like, you know, five minutes of like one liners and, you know, and, and so it's a, it's a neat way to be able to, you know, re continue to reach people and, and, you know, play my buddy Ed. Can you send me a link to your cam, you know, because I want to do something sure. special for my friend's birthday, though. Sure, absolutely. Uh, and um, what was I going to say, too? Another a line that you just nailed, though, even when, when it's with Sarah, though, is when you go, Eddie, Sarah's going to tell mom, mom's going to tell dad, and dad's just going to sit there and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we all know it's so true to life, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there's another one. Oh, oh, my girlfriend loves when I say this one. Uh, when when uh, when they try to turn Johnny into like a really powerful nuisance, and he goes, and people really like it when you poke him on the head. <laughs> Daddy likes it. Oh, there's like oh, there's hundreds of them. It's crazy, man. So actually, it's funny that one. Actually, I'd forgotten until you just said it. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the episode where Ed actually had, uh, like, what was your opinion on doing this episode where Ed was actually in a bad mood because he had a pebble in his shoe? Uh-huh. Uh, did you have any, I think it was called Ed Blues or something like that, where, like, Ed was, like, screaming, like, even scare, Sarah got scared at him, like, he said, so move! Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. Oh, and, uh, well, it's funny because me, I'm a runner in real life, so for me, it, it is true. If I got something in my shoe, it drives me nuts. You know, so it was nice to be able to like, you know, bring the art, you know, in reality of it, right? To go like, okay, how would I feel? How would I feel? Oh, we feel the same way. Oh! <laughs> well, what about, uh, and you know what's my favorite episodes of Ed and Eddie? Because I just think they're the they're great antagonists. And that is any episode with the Canker Sisters. Oh, absolutely. Oh my God, those three beautiful chicks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's, you know, you almost wish there was... There would have been time to have almost like a, a Canker Sister spinoff, you know, uh, where where they were the three mains, and then like we all sort of came in, and you know, maybe like we had visit them in their dreams or something. Who knows? <laughs> now, what was your thoughts doing? Um, like the recording session where it was you, uh, Sam, and <clears throat> Tony doing recording lines for the Canker Sisters, which was Janice, uh, Kathleen Barr, and Aaron Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Uh -huh. What was and, your message? 
and sir, so what was our memory of that? Yeah, like all six of you recording dialogue together. Well, that's the wild thing about the show. We, out of all those episodes, we only ever recorded as a whole cast once. And that was in the first very much recording and stuff because, you know, obviously they wanted to get everybody together. Um, and it, they really realized that, like, very quickly we were going to run out of recording time because either one, we were so funny or <laughs> probably in their eyes, we were so slow because, you know, we were having too much fun. So um, just for production wise, after that first episode, that was it. One and done. So the rest of the whole, you know, eight seasons and movies, I mean, every once in a while we'd we'd kind of be in there together at the same time if, if we just, you know, if one of the sessions overlapped at all. Um, but we very rarely, you know, did it say like, like a scene with the rest of the cast. It was always just the three Eds. Oh, okay. Yeah. And before we get into the movie, cause I love the movie. I loved NNA's big picture show. Um, I want to talk about the origins of like, how did a uh, gravy and butter toast, where did that come from? Oh my lord. Um, you know, and that's where I gotta hand it to the writers, dude, because that was them. And they just like they they gave what I sort of like produced as this vacant ed dude and came up with I think some of the best one liners or like that iconic words that you know um that I still get to use. Um but they yeah, I mean they were you know and once I keyed in on that they really just wanted me to just kind of come at ed like it was everything was kind of like new for the first time so like every time i said butter toast or gravy it was like oh gravy right <laughs> you know so you know it's like have you seen that jiff peanut butter commercial yes you know, where like the guy's like it's like he's experiencing peanuts for the first time each time that's how they wanted ed to be kind of like oh oh gravy oh hi. <laughs> oh chickens well oh, butter toast you know so it was always just like oh the best thing ever <laughs> Um, there was an episode of Mirror Mirror on the Ed where like Ed has to act like Eddie. What was it like you being Ed acting like Eddie? Oh, that was, yeah, that was fun because um, we all used to take the piss out of each other in the studio and we'd all kind of mock each other and make fun of each other's characters in sort of like, you know, like, in, well, what, yeah, like, you know, Double D would always get picked on because, you know, he's so whiny all the time and yeah. <laughs> so like, being Eddie, it was great because, you know, we know me and Sammy, we'd be like, hey, <laughs> we just like, oh, we just like, yeah, we, we, there was a reason we became really great friends, the three of us, because we really were in, I think in some respects, we really, we really were those three characters because, you know, even in our friendship, it was competitive. It was all around, you know, doing different things the certain way, you know. And then as far as like with Eddie, you know, he was just such a great guy to be able to pick on because, you know, he's a lot taller. He was bigger than I am. And so he could have probably just, you know, one punch to the head. I probably would have dead, but, you know, but he had a heart of gold. So, you know, it was all in good fun, you know, kind of like the, you know, the classic, like, like best friends growing up on a cul-de-sac together. Right. You know, we got to forge that in real life, but also, you know, in this show right by the lines and times that we got to spend in the studio together. Cause you know, that's a lot of like all our sessions were four hours long. So that was a lot of four hour sessions that we had together, you know? So there, there's a whole lot of bonding going on in, in that time, you know? You, you know what I, I thought was really cool about Ed and Eddie, how innovative it was. And by, what I mean is that, hmm. you know, a lot of shows have kids and adults, but this is the one show by, I, that I've seen in years that never had an adult on the show. I mean, you've seen Eddie's father's hands, you've seen Ed's mother's hand, but you've never seen their full bodies. Like, yeah. it was kind of like Charlie Brown in some aspects. Yeah, us, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Yeah. And, that, you know, I had that to Danny as well, right? Because, you know, he just he just had this vision. It's like, no, this is the way it's going to be. Um, you know, and I got also handed to Cartoon Network at the time, too, because obviously someone in their, not creative department, but somewhere in the like, department that says, yes, we're going to say yes to all this, continue to say yes. And you know what I mean? And so there was a lot of this going on from a whole lot of people, which I believe elevated everybody that was part of the show, right? So that then it could, you know, remain such a timeless classic for, for people, right? Um, you know, or maybe, maybe not remain a timeless classic. What I mean by that is because other things come as well. But I think it, it's why it's it's still such a um, well maybe that is the right word 
a timeless classic. I don't know, you know, because it was a certain moment of time, even say for Cartoon Network, right? Yeah. Um, and and I think it it just fed something so creatively that so many people just like it just hit, you know. And it was around the world. That's what I think is so cool too, right? Is you know hearing from hearing from people from you know planet wide going like I love Ed, right? It's just like you know for me it's like oh you know. It's like getting chickens every day. <laughs> awesome. And I, I do want to like ask like when you like when there's a line in unison though, like if like all three of you are screaming canker sisters or if you are screaming jawbreakers, like how how do they do it? Is it like one, two, three, then you all say it at the same time, or do you oh, just record it at the same at different times? Yes. 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 To that in three, yes, that's how we did it. We were we were one, two, three, go. But it was like, think of three people swinging a golf club at, at, at not the same time. That was the three of us sometimes trying to just do one, two, three, because I'd end up messing up most of the time because I'm dyslexic. Math is not my favorite subject. Um, not mine either. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I mean? It's like, so ah, oh, even counting for me was tough. So then I get into Ed mode and, you know, oh, and so, so it, you know, I, I wish actually we had some outtakes of actually the the actual full on almost fisticuffs that we came to not because we were mad at each other but because it was just like the guys would be like Maddie it's really simple it's just three then you just you know you pause and then you go right I'll be like yeah okay all right you know they'd be like one two three ah! and I'd say the line wrong and you know be out of time or I'd wait and I'd wait too long right so you know oh yeah ah. And you know what was so cool about uh, Ed and Eddie? It's kind of similar to, like, you know, like in Fat Albert, everyone has their way of walking, like their walking styles. Yeah. And, like, Ed and Eddie, <laughs> like, had their walking styles. Like, Ed, a, a double D would be like this, and then Eddie would be like this, and then uh, Ed would be with his head back like that. Oh, it's so cool. Totally. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, it's kind of like art imitating life a little bit because, you know, um, I kind of run like that, too, in real life. So, you know. Maybe a little less head back, but not much. <laughs> and out of all the characters, I mean, Double D, like, is what, but people, like, love Ed because he's so good natured. Like, he's very, a very good natured character. He means well. Like, and, like, you, you wouldn't believe, like, how many characters. When I, when I ask people, my friends, who, who out of every character in Ed and Eddie was your favorite? Everyone is, like, almost unanimously saying Ed. Ah, oh, well, that is very, that's, uh, that warms my heart, man. Thank you. It's, uh, you know, I think in some respects, it's it's why I can I guess maybe Ed in particular maybe um helps people continue to remember uh, maybe just a really happy time. I think you know, and especially I know if I got probably the unanimous message from kids and and everybody that I've talked to over the years, you know, about this like say this particular character, um, it really did help them get sometimes through really tough situations. You know, and you know, like the number of kids that have emailed me over the years or kids that I ran into that said, you know, I was bullied in school because I was different or, you know, and, and it was, a, and they, and they saying that knowing that they could come home and watch Ed, Ed, Netty. And, and on a lot of days, Ed specifically because of what you just said, because he always made people feel good. Right. Even though he was just this stupid lump, but he had a heart of gold, right. That, you know, maybe that's the universal message for all of us. Right. You know, we all just kind of want to, I don't know. I think we all just want to feel like we belong, right? Um, and so to be able to continue to play this character um, in the ways that I am privileged to be able to do it is, oh my God, it's my, it's my, you know, have I said honor and privileged enough? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, but that's how I feel, right? It's, uh, you know, and so like when, even when we went out on our run around North America, it, it was that same instant feedback loop of, feeling so much gratitude coming at me from people but then my gratitude to them for sharing with me what this effect of this character has had on them and then me in that you know in that moment being able to just be like you know now remember believe in yourself there young jimmy man or you know um it's you know it's 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 kind of that it's like the constant positive feedback loop right so you know i say ed for president uh 2022 how yes, uh, or is that the one? What's no? It's not 2022, is it? Would it be 24. <laughs> How about midterms? Okay, Ed, midterms 2022. <laughs> and my running mate would be Double D, 
uh, and uh, one of the Canker Sisters, maybe. <laughs> now, oh, oh, speaking of Canker Sisters, though, uh, memories of uh, working, uh, doing recording um, uh, with uh, your show girlfriend, uh, Aaron Fitzgerald, who played Lee, um, May Canker. May Canker, oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, because... Yeah. The, you know, for years, right? They're like, you know, you have a crush on me. I'm like, no, I don't. Maybe I do. I don't know. Do I? <laughs> you know, so it was, it was fun to be able to like, just so ever so slightly be able to put in this just little bit of like, you know, I like Ed's completely clueless, but like, oh, maybe he does have a, you know, a crush on, on May, right? I mean, she certainly had a crush on him. That's for sure. But, uh, uh, but yeah, same thing. Just, just, uh, just a great like set of years, you know? Uh, yeah. Have you, have you interviewed any of the cankers at all? No. no. I mean, in the future, I'm scheduled to interview Janice Jod, but I have no way to contact like Kathleen. Uh, Carr. I don't know what happened to her. Yeah, no, she's been pretty quiet for a long time. I mean, she still works a ton, but she's just, uh, she's a pretty private person. She, you know, she always takes it as, you know what, if the, if the president of a bank doesn't really want to get interviewed, I, you know, I mean, bad, bad example, but, um, but she's just such a lovely, lovely talented human being um and uh you know she just she just you know she's grateful for the life that she has and she keeps it pretty pretty low profile so we all try to respect that and, and i gotta ask you just two questions too because there was a theory online and since you're an act like an actual cast member of nnnd like they said that uh some of the, ki the kids in the show were like they're from different time periods like ed like eddie's from like the 50s because of his style they say Naz is like in the '60s. It's like she represents the '60s because she's very hippie-like. They said uh, um, Kevin is like the '80s theme because of how like his style is. Do you agree with some of these like uh, uh, this th these theories? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, it's funny. I, 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 to be honest with you, I didn't really think about it that much because you know it's it's different when you're on the show and you're playing the you're playing this character. I'm just always just focusing on okay, what's my piece today? that I'm adding to the lines that they've given me to speak, do them within the allotted amount of time that I've got to speak them. Don't get fired. You know, <laughs> that's really what all, all I kept thinking. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's always just fun for people, I guess, to, you know, go, Oh, well maybe it's from there. Maybe it's from that, you know, memories of working on the Ed and Eddie video game, Miss Ed adventures. I, Oh, same thing, dude. Just, you know, like, uh, getting to do anything ed was such a privilege you know um and uh, you know because same thing i'm not a big get video game player i never have been so it was neat to go man these guys are popular enough that we get to do a video game holy crap this is cool right so like i never even saw the game so i don't was it good uh I've seen uh, the document. I didn't. I wasn't able to play the game yet, but I, I seen the documentary of like behind the scenes where like you and Sam, like you actually gave Sam a big bear hug during the documentary while doing recording. Like, yes. was, was oh, so for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's all I say. Those kids are, you know, they're they're workmates, but you know, we're 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 all besties. We're all good friends. So it's good, man. Well, now I I want to ask you this one too because this is. 2009, this is the final conclusion of Ed and Eddie of the series, and that is Ed and Eddie's big picture show, the movie. Yep, yep. Uh, memories of doing that. Oh, well, you know, um, there was so much wrapped up in that because I knew, um, well, I knew that, you know, it was almost like, and not that we were this, but so I don't say it like that, but because we knew they, you know, the network had said, you know what, they're not, we're not going to come back, you know, and this will be the last, the last, um, you know, record and, and part of the project and stuff like that. Plus I was about to head out on our run around North America. So I knew, I knew even physically I was going to be, you know, leaving the building as per, you know, as per, as respect to that. And it was really nostalgic because, because like that we're recording this, this, you know, this last sort of big, you know, um, moment. Um, that kind of doesn't really end because they wanted to leave it open, I guess, for, you know, well, who knows, right? Um, but it, but in our hearts, we knew that it was over. Um, so it was a mix of like, oh, my God, what a crazy ride this has been. And, you know, and at the same time, it was like, well, you know, hey, it's been a great ride, you know. And um, sometimes those rides need to you, – sometimes you need to get off the ride because, you know, it's kind of like Seinfeld. You know, when they decided to stop, some people went like, What? 
what are you crazy? It's still number one. It's still, you know, huge or whatever. And they said, that's the perfect time to end something, right? Instead yeah. of dragging it out for another, you know, year or two or whatever. Right. And I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I think they made the right call, you know? Um, I think, you know, cause who knows, right. It's like, you know, people talk about rebooting it now and this and that. I'm like, ah, forget it. It would just, it would tank. Right. You can't, you can't just, you know, you can't bring that back. Totally. And yeah, you're supposed to, right. I, I totally agree. And uh, what was the name of the uh, the gentleman that played uh, Eddie's big brother in the uh, movie, the, the voice oh, actor? Yeah, you know what? I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. He's not listed. Uh, I, I I gotta look it up though. Like I yeah. just want like, were you, did you record in the booth with him too? I I guess I don't remember if I did, but I don't think I did um no i think no god it's funny that particular last you know bunch of recordings and stuff are my brain was so full because we were heading out on our run um around the continent so i had like i i remember i was so stoked to be doing the show but i was so full with like a bunch of other stuff i barely remember like the last three weeks of you know of recording and then being home and then and then taking off a few days later so um Pardon me, my brain's a little fuzzy. I, I figured out the name of the gentleman. Uh, Terry Classen was the guy that played uh, Eddie's oh, big brother. Terry Classen, that's right. Well, I'll give you a little insider secret uh, answer. Terry was our voice director. What? Yeah. He was our voice director. And he played the big brother. He played the big brother. So there you go. See, I don't even remember that. That's so cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. And uh, okay. I'm sorry. Nope, he obviously did a good job. So you know, he, you know, he, or because there was no other extra characters on the show ever, right? So it's like, hey, who's that guy? <laughs> do you still keep in touch with, uh, like, aside from like Sam and uh, Tony, do you still keep in touch with like Kathleen or uh, Janice Jod or Aaron Fitzgerald? Gerald? Uh, no, well, not as much. Only because, um, well, Janice, I don't know if I don't even know if she's acting anymore. Um, and Aaron lives in Los Angeles. She has for a long time. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you know, for a while we, we all kind of kept in touch. Um, but you know, if we're not working on a show together, um, you just kind of, it's, it's funny. It's just like, that's kind of like the family units, you know? Um, so, you know, I think that that's why Sammy and I have, you know, became friends for so, so long. Cause we worked on a bunch of stuff after Ed, Ed and Eddie as well. So, although I haven't worked with them for a couple of years now. So, um, you know, maybe that's why he's not returning my call. <sighs> <laughs> tell you, tell you. I, um, I was what was I gonna say too? Like, uh, with uh, and I noticed too uh, in the show, like the original voice of Naz was Tabitha Saint Germain. Like, how come they like? Do you know like what was the reason why they replaced her with Aaron Fitzgerald? No idea. I mean, sometimes it's just you know, for whatever reason, you know, we've we've often sometimes even like on another show I was just on recently, um, called Dino Trucks. Um, you know, we did 13 episodes and that at like episode 13 break, they said, okay, we're going to take a couple week break. We came back and like half the cast was replaced, you know, with another other part of the cast. And sometimes they just, it's, you know, sometimes they get enough shows in the can and they go, oh, is it working? Okay. What's working? What's maybe not working? And, you know, and stuff. So that's definitely the, you know, the, the life of an actor. Right. So, you know, Hence, like that, sometimes the love and the, oh, my God, I don't want to lose my job. <laughs> so it keeps it fresh, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, what were your memories of doing the, uh, I forgot the name of the special, but it was the Ed and Eddie Valentine's Day special. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like all the ones, right? I mean, they all kind of had their own, you know, pardon the pun, but they all had their own special magic. And, you know, because each one was so different, right? But yet it was so the same in a really kind of weird way, right? You know? Cause like you, you still got these like unbelievable lines, you know, and then these characters that then would just happen to be in different, you know, situations, but really they were always kind of in the same situation. <laughs> right. So you, know, Ed, Ed, you, know, Ed. you got Ed scheme, Eddie, Eddie scheming, you know, double D's fretting and, you know, Ed single D's like running around in circles, <laughs> you know, so that's pretty much us. When you when playing Ed though, like how do you feel? Because Ed is like very good natured. He's not known for like yelling like times. Like what what is like what's your thoughts when you have to like when the script calls for you to scream as Ed? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was yeah, it was uh, I mean, 
I sometimes, like I say, there were there were moments from my where I really I worked for my money that day because you know my vocal cords would bleed kind of you know because and if 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 you didn't hear it the right way then you know they wouldn't let it go so that was kind of sometimes going like oh please please let me do this like perfect the first time you know and uh you know especially in the screams and stuff because it's like it takes a lot of energy to just like keep scream 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 right so you know but uh i think we did a pretty good job dude i think they were pretty happy for the most part very cool. And um, I, I think one of my favorite lines when you scream, there's two things I love when you scream. And that's the one where they're trying to watch the monster movie marathon. And then at the end of the episode, Ed goes, quiet, stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love when you, when you scream, uh, stinky hat, stinky hat. <laughs> totally, dude. <laughs> like I said, you nailed Ed. Like, you know, as much as I loved Captain N, like, you know, and Dino Babies, Ed, to me, will always have a special place in my heart. Oh, oh thanks, brother. Yep. No, it's uh, me too. Absolutely. You know, all those other ones, it was all, it's all part of a career, right? You know, it's, uh, you know, like Captain N specifically, because it was my first, you know, big, big league cartoon. I was so green. I had no idea really what I was doing. Um, you know, we all just kind of same thing. We trial by fire, learned how to voice act. Right. And, you know, um, thankfully I was in a room with some really like uber talented people. Right. So, um, you know, and our directors, same thing. Right. And people who were just super kind to me because, you know, they could have said, hey, kid, eh, you kind of shat in the bed there on that line. But they didn't. Right. They said, OK, all right, just do it again. <laughs> right. You know, so um, it's, uh, you know, I guess that's a. I guess that's the proverbial thing for life, isn't it? It's like always, you know, keep working on yourself, working on your dreams. And if you fall down, get up, you know, kick your feet a little further, get up that hill. <laughs> you, you, it's awesome. I, and words, definitely inspirational words. You you remind me so much of another voice actor who I interviewed and he's, uh, uh, he's you know, like awesome like you are. And that's uh, Townsend Coleman. Who, ta what's his name? Townsend Coleman, he played uh, Michelangelo like in the 87 Ninja Turtles. Yeah, dude, that's cool, man. I've never met him, but I hear he's a very, very fine, um, you know, a person of awesomeness as well. So that's good. It's nice. Feels uh, feels humbling to be in such good company. So that's that's great. Thank Absol you. Absolutely. Like, you know, I've interviewed so many in the past. I've interviewed uh, I, I've interviewed you. Like so far, I'm interviewing you right now. Like I've interviewed uh, Roger B Bumpus, who plays Squidward on SpongeBob. Like, um, and so many names that I'm just very proud. Of. I grew up watching this. I I remember being a nine year old, and I remember to this day what your first line was as Ed, and it was when you put Double D and Ed in a headlock. You go, Hey, Eddie, what's up? <laughs> See, thank you for taking me down memory lane, man, because I don't even remember that. So, oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I remember too, like I said, like when I was a kid, I would always tape. I remember I taped the ep I used to tape Ed and Eddie, like when it was Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Uh, and, yeah. And I would tape it like in the 90s. I remember the episode where Double D becomes a wrestler. I have that on a tape somewhere. Like, I still uh, have my old VHS tapes. That's uh, amazing. Absolutely. It's and like all, these, all these stretch, stretch scenes where you had to like rewind it and stuff. Right. Cause it was probably like on a beta or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, I think I almost broke uh, my VCR one time when I kept flying it to the part where I, I laughed my ass off every time when you'd say, don't even think about it. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and, um, now, uh, uh, Matt, before we conclude the interview, though, because this is an open forum and I allow everybody that comes on, to, you know, to have, you know, the floor, like they can talk about anything sure. they want. It's an yeah. uh, open forum. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. Oh, you mean for me? Yeah. I have to talk about saying anything I want to talk about? Yep, open forum. Oh, I thought you meant like, um, you know, people would type in a, a question or something like that. Oh, so no, this, this is for um, you. This is wow. your uh, open forum so you can say anything you want right now yeah. well you know um i think in this moment of covid altered living that we're all you know living in right now to me it's even more important to connect with what lights you up and you know connect with those that you love um you know make the world a better place being exactly where you are because right in this moment you're enough like everyone else is taken right you're the only you that there will ever be um, and, you know, take it from Ed, like kick uh, your feet uh, a plenty towards your dreams um, and, you know, eat good food like Ed. Buttered toast and gravy is a very yummy combination. Um, you know, treat yourself with some jawbreakers, you know, unless 
unless you know something else lights your boat um then uh, then do that but you know for real just like take care of each other and take care of our loved ones um and you know with all my heart from ed and you know um he would say that same thing right just going just keep being sparkly awesome you you know um because it's an honor to get to uh to get to be here and uh, you know do this thing called called voice acting so um thanks again for this privilege thank you and uh I want to thank you for not only the interview, but thank you for those memories you've given me as a child. I mean, I was a fan of yours as uh, while I went up watching Ed and Eddie. I was in the third grade when Ed and Eddie came out, and when the show ended, I was already on my way to college. Oh man, see that's crazy, awesome. Because how old were you in two thousand eight? Two thousand eight, I was eighteen. Oh, eighteen. Okay, so you were just out of high school then. Because yeah, because when we did our work, because where did you grow up? Uh, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay, yeah. So when we went through Brooklyn on our Run For One Planet tour, some of our coolest school events were in the Brooklyn Heights area and in Hoboken and uh, down in Manhattan. And then like, uh, what do you call it? Like um, Jersey City. Uh, oh, love New York. It's a beautiful town. But I wish we would have, like if you would have been in school at the time, we could have come to your school. That's what, you know, that would have been great. I would have. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> but we get to meet now, so this is a very uh, what a gift, man. Thanks, brother. Absolutely, and um, uh, and thank you, and um, uh, I'm gonna send you if you want. I can send you a copy of this interview uh, for yourself. I'll I'll, I'll mail oh. it to you. I'll email it to you. Um, yeah. Could, could you send me like when we uh, when we disconnect? Um, can you send me a link to your cameo? Yep, absolutely. I will. Yep, definitely. Um, and uh, and I'll send you a picture of Ed uh, that I think you'll like because it's a it's a it's a good one. So um, you say, send me your address when you. When you, uh, you, I'm sorry, what did you say first? Oh, yeah, just send your address, your mailing address, and I'll snail mail you an Ed photo because I think you'll like it. It's, uh, you know. Thank you so much. I mean, I feel like I'm nine years old again. Oh, like, that's you. Great, man. Well, keep that nine-year-old self you alive, brother. <laughs> you have an awesome night, sir. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, buddy. Take care, hey? Take care. Bye-bye. Okay,